Praise the Lord. Amen. Kindly be seated. In Kajo Keiji, the response is Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. A few of you have made the 20 or so hour trek. Our way there took over 33 hours. And in this journey, also includes a, a four-seater prop plane from Entebbe across Uganda, across the Nile River to the border city of Moyo. And then it's a bumpy, winding jeep ride to this holy land. For 17 years ago, the Diocese of Bethlehem and the Cathedral Church of the Nativity partnered with the cathedral and the Diocese of Kajukeji. It was your financial support, your commitment, your prayers, that led to the building of five schools, a secondary school, New Hope Christian College, the bishop's residence, and the diocesan offices. An extraordinary and remarkable undertaking that has transformed lives. On this, the first Sunday of Lent, I, I come to you having just returned from Kajukeji's South Sudan. If I look a bit haggard, if I sound a little bit evangelical, you now know why. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. On this journey, Deacon Barabo and I were greeted at the Moyo airstrip by their new bishop, Bishop James, who's just 45 years of age, and his wife, Mary. He was ordained this past September at their cathedral. This is all because of the sudden death of beloved Bishop Emmanuel who died shortly after Patty and I met with him and his wife Cecilia at the Lambeth Conference in Canterbury a year ago, August. It was heartbreaking to see Cecilia again and to hear the story of his last few hours. You may also recall that the last time we traveled to Kajukeji was in 2020, just before the pandemic. February, almost the exact week, four years previously. All of the churches and schools were closed when we visited last. Violence and civil war had forced the people to flee from their beloved homeland to camps in Moyo, and that's where we gathered with them. This trip, marked a new moment as they are returning, returning home. Schools have been repaired, thanks to you, and they're reopened. The college has been repaired, thanks to you, and is thriving, and they're building new buildings once again. The churches and their clergy are returning and gathering again. Deacon Charlie traveled to each of the schools that you funded, meeting with headmasters and teachers and their PTAs, continuing to develop best practices just like they did from the very beginning. And I had the privilege of, of leading their clergy in a Lenten day of prayer and reflection. I was told in advance that if I could offer just an hour or so teaching, that that would be wonderful, something to bring hope. Well, I was teaching for a full day, about eight hours. Fortunately, I had plenty of material. And we'll get to that. From Mark 1.12, we hear, and the Spirit immediately drove them drove him out of the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness for 40 days, 
tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, I didn't need to say much to the clergy of Kajukeji about wilderness moments. They know them all too well. Instead, I reached for the Psalms. In particular, the Psalms of Lament. The great biblical scholar Walter Brueggemann organizes the Psalms around three general themes. Psalms are poems of orientation, psalms of disorientation, and psalms of new orientation. And I I shared a bit about why or how the psalms have been a blessing to me, a blessed companion in the most difficult moments of my life, and how they are fitting companions for a Lenten journey. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about what Brueggemann said. And he speaks in terms of our lives. He says, life consists of satisfied seasons, seasons of well-being, seasons that evoke gratitude and blessing. And these are the Psalms of orientation. They articulate joy and delight and goodness and coherence, the reliability of God and God's creation. Life also consists of anguished seasons, and you may know them. Seasons of hurt, alienation, suffering, tragedy, and even death of loved ones, our most beloved. And they invoke emotions, they invoke rage and resentment, even self-pity and bitterness. Friends, these are the psalms of disorientation. Seasons of chaos and painful disarray. The lament is the most recognizable form. And it often includes a rush of rage, there may be resentment, There may be despair, even hostility. The familiar cry is, where are you, Lord? Where are you in the midst of all that I'm suffering? Psalm 25 today, beautifully sung, verses 1 to 9. It's a a rare example. You won't find it much in, in our liturgical text. It's a rare example of a lament psalm. Now, Bear with me. I want you to either open up your your bulletin or open up, even better, open up your prayer book to page 614. 614. Psalm 25. Now stay with me. You heard verse 1. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. We jump to verse 6. Remember not the sins of my youth and transgressions. Now we could spend 20 minutes just talking about our youthfulness and our transgressions. It's not that long ago. Remember me according to your love, O Lord, for the sake of your goodness. Verse 8. Guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. You see, what, what we left out with some of the good stuff. Keep going down to Psalm 15. We didn't sing that today. Turn to me and have pity on me, for I am left alone in misery. The sorrows of my heart have increased. Bring me out of my troubles. Look upon my adversity and misery and forgive me all my sins. And then the turn. Takes a while. Get to verse 21. Deliver Israel, O God, out of all of his troubles. You see, the psalmist, in all of his rage, doesn't always get to verse 21 in the first writing. I imagine it may have taken years sometimes 
to start praising God again after all that one had endured. That's a psalm of lament. Now again, to recap, there are seasons of orientation. There are seasons of disorientation where only the lament makes sense. But life also consists of surprising moments when joy miraculously breaks through the despair, when there'd only been darkness and now there's light. These are the psalms of new orientation. They, they speak of a fresh intrusion by God that makes all things new. And it often comes after pain and loss and can even catch us by surprise. I want to share a gift with you, a gift that was given to me by the clergy of the Diocese of Kajukeji. For when I asked them to pick out a psalm that speaks to their lives, their living and their loving, they termed a Psalm 113. So join me on page 756. 756, Psalm 113. It's a short one. It's a good one. I can't say hallelujah because it's Lent, so I won't say that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 3, from the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. That's all time. That's all the time. Verse 6, he takes up the weak out of the dust and lifts up the poor from the ashes. This is an Ash Wednesday psalm. Takes up the weak out of the dust and lifts up the poor from the ashes. And verse 8. This is a God of surprises, a God who can do anything. Verse 8, he makes the woman of a childless house to be a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. Yeah. From the rising of the sun to its going down, they praise the Lord. Now, friends, we were seven hours ahead of you here and all those clergy wanted to do, they banged, we had the biggest drum I ever saw. They banged that drum, and we sang, we danced. Well, they danced, I didn't dance. They danced. And all they wanted to do was pray for you, for the Diocese of Bethlehem, on Ash Wednesday at a packed cathedral. And I mean packed. There wasn't a seat. People were standing. Now, let me tell you about the demographic. In that packed cathedral, the largest group were men in their 20s and 30s. They wanted to pray for you. They wanted, now we were sleeping, or you were sleeping, we were awake. They wanted to pray that you had a holy Lent. That God would somehow touch your heart in a new and remarkable way, this Lent. That's when we talked about Psalm 113. God takes up the weak out of the dust and lifts up the poor from the ashes. Dawning before us was the reality that the people of Kajukeji were moving from disorientation and lament to new orientation. Whether they fully understood it in Brueggemann's terms but the return to the dust and ashes of their homes, schools, and churches was filled with a wonder and surprise. There was a nearness of God. There was an emerging hopefulness after a long and daunting season of loss and despair. It was palpable that God was preparing something new. And I shared with them that my growing sense that here in the Diocese of Bethlehem or in the Lehigh Valley or, or beyond our walls, it may, like, may feel like a time of orientation for some. Some may feel like this is a stable moment where it's easy to praise God. 
There may be a sense of certainty and stability for some, but for many of the folk that I talk to, speak of disorientation. Whether it's the rancor of our public discourse, whether it's the struggle for justice, grief and loss, a fear for our future, a fear for the future of our own beloved ones, I hear more the cries of lament. And the great gift in the midst of that is that we're being invited by Jesus to enter the wilderness anew and to not go there alone, but to go with each other. Jesus invites us to bring all that we are, all that we long for, all that needs God's healing touch. I want to close with one more psalm from from the clergy, from Kajukeji. This is Psalm 118, on page 761. Psalm 118, begins on page 760. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Verse 5. I called to the Lord in my distress. The Lord answered me by setting me free. The Lord is at my side, therefore I will not fear. What can anyone do to me? I was pressed so hard that I almost fell. But the Lord came to my help. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he's become my salvation. The priest told me that every time he reads verse 18, he cries because he was near death. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. And verse 21, I will give thanks to you for you have answered me and have become my salvation. Finally, verse 29, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Beloved of the cathedral, I implore you to take the Psalms with you on your Lenten journey, to read them, to walk with them, to find ancient words that speak the same voice of your own loss, your own struggle, your own brokenness, and bring it all to God. May your Lent be holy. Never forget you are God's beloved. Be not afraid. Walk in love. And never forget to praise the Lord.